the fight, that was the last war, it took place on Mount Zinkemi. So when you go up the mountain, you see some heavy stones there. The people use the stones to push them on the Asantes to be able to conquer them. So they realize that this is a very good place where they can stay. Megalo, wondering what I just said, well what better way to welcome you than in the native language of the people whose community I'm in. I'm in the heart of the highest human settlement in Ghana, Amejofe. Now in our previous episodes, you remember we did a tour around Mount Gemi at the Ote Waterfalls, the Amejofe Canopy Walkway, and then we learned a bit about the oldest church in the Vatime traditional area. Today we focus on a major fair as a community because we cannot live without learning about these people. I'll see you after the break. We'll get right into the conversation. My name is Wanda Ami Hagan. A major fair is a community being part of seven communities of the Avatime traditional area. The traditional era is made up of seven communities. Amejope, Vane, Bajeme, Fumi, Biakba, Jogbefeme, and then Jokwe, making the seven communities. They are the seven communities, making the traditional era. And then we migrated from Ahanta in the western region. Then from Ahanta, we came to Dodoa. From Dodoa, our people moved to Agotim and Keto. And then, because they were warlike people, they couldn't coexist with the people of Agotim and Keto. They have to move to uh, Mache and then Tagepe. They couldn't coexist with those people as well. So they have to move up the mountains here to a place called Okulusu, near Biaka. Then, from Okulusu, they decided to start scattering to check the whole area to see if they could get any suitable place so that they could settle around. So from Okulosu, the people of Amejope moved up here to a place called Okbokolomi. So from Okbokolomi, they moved through a stream called Agamechieme to a place called Kupiese. And Kupiese is one of our tall sites where our nature trail is. Okay. So from Kupiese, they moved to Kupuava. Kupuava is the area where we can find the Amejope waterfalls, which is the Ute waterfalls. So before the people of Amejope got here, there were some giants on this land, and they were known as Baya. So as they were traveling along the range, they sent their spies to spy on the Baya, to see how strong they are, how they can be able to defeat them, and then take over this area. So from there, they moved to Kukwaba, settled at Kukwaba, spy on the buyer. So when they spied on the buyer, and they got where they could use to take them off from this place and then settle here, they sent their warriors to come and make peace with the people of Baya. So they made peace with them through sharing of drinks. And then after that, they were able to conquer them. 
marry their wives and then share them into the seven communities as well. So that is how can we speak the language called Sia. So we speak Sia. We don't speak Ewe, but we are the Ewe land. And then we are widely known as Avatimi people because we were led by a man known as Obojani, who later on became Avati. And then Avati led the Avatimi people to this area. And then they always coined the Avati word as Avati Woyomi, meaning that we were warlike people. So the war was always following us. And we have to fight it along all the places that we go through. So we were able to conquer the Baya people. And then after that, our people settled here finally. So that's a little history about Amejobe, how we came to settle here. Yes. I'd like to know what's the meaning of Amejobe? Amejobe is a password that was used by our people to be able to conquer the buyer. And Amejofe, uh, the previous name, the password is Mujohe. Mujohe. So, uh, trying to invade this area to conquer the buyer. If the warriors come and then you say you are part of Mujohe, then you are identified. Yes, they will be able to be identified. So, the only password the buyer don't understand is Mujohe. So, as our people were climbing up, we were telling each other, let me get up, get a flat land. Okay. That is the meaning of Mujohe. In which language? Our language, okay. Sia, Sia language. Yes, that is Mujohe, was the previous name. Before it later became Amejohe. Okay. Yes. So it's a corrupted form of Mujohe. Yes. Amejohe exactly. is a corrupted form of Mujohe. Mujohe. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can you please explain what Amejope means? Okay. Amejope, now being understood in Ewe, means where all people come from. Now where all Ewe. people come from? Yes. Okay. Now in Ewe. So that's the basic understanding now. And you mentioned that um, the people of Amejope could not live with previous communities they, yes. they went to because they are warlike. Yes. But how is it that when you settled here, you didn't move to another community? So when we settled here, um, the only people who were here were Baya people. And then when we moved here as well, the Ashantis came to fight us as well. And the fight, that was the last war. It took place on Mount Nkemi. So when you go up the mountain, you see some heavy stones there. The people use the stones to push them on the Asantes to be able to conquer them. So they realize that this is a very good place where they can stay and then they can always fight their wars. Because down the valley, for that place, you cannot always win a war. So when they came here, they were able to win the Ashanti war and they realized this is a perfect place for them to settle. And the buyer people, when you guys shared drinks yes. and were able to come into the land, yes. did any of them um say merge with your people do you still have any of the buyers among you today yes, because uh, they are they, they are warrior they are warriors were killed through the drinks let me say the drinks were poisoned yes, so one of our greatest warriors has to sacrifice himself he took the first drink from our people and then everybody was like he's drunk and they took him away they knew that he was going to die so when the bad people came in, they took all the drinks and they died. So their wives and children were shared among the seven communities and they were married off. So learning a language, language is mostly being learned from childhood. So you see, you pick up learning languages from the childhood and women, yes. So they married their women to all the people who were interested in the seven communities. So they are places of buyer people, but just that we cannot identify that this person is a buyer. Yes. Okay. I'm asking because you say they were giants. Were yes. they their wives and children were they also giants? Yes. Okay, so So in the olden days there were giant male and female people. Mm -hmm. That was how come they used to identify them easily. 
But today you cannot go and tell somebody you are a buyer person. Okay. Yes. Okay. But you see people like that around. There are people who are tall. Okay. And giant, but I can't tell you. Okay. You are a descendant of buyer. Okay. Yes. Sure. All right. So let's come now to the community today. Yes. Um, who heads the community? The community is headed by uh, the township. Mm -hmm. But before then, when our people came to settle here, um, before they could settle here peacefully, the community was also having some people who came to settle first, before the others came from Kukwava. I mentioned Kukwava area, Kukwava to come and join them. So when the Kukwava people came to join, those who came first to settle after the Baya people were conquered, they had to um, come together to create a community. So they laid some stones we call Ibole. Ebole. Ibole. Ibole. Yes. So you can see the stones at the market where the two stones have been kept. I'm sure we'll get there yes. soon. So it was the Ibole that they used to set up the community. So those people who are from the side of Avati, who led the Avatime people, led the upper one, which is the, uh, the first Ibole. And then the second people are the Dokume people who laid the down one meaning they are coming together to stay finally. So Avati selected a township from his children. So for him, he was able to give the community a township uh, to one son, then the, how do you call it, the Chiami. Ochiami. Ochiami, the other one, and then the queen mother to the third one. That is how he shared his uh, leadership positions to these people. Mm -hmm. So the Dukumi people take over the Mankrado part. So they are the Mankrado of the community. Mm -hmm. So the other part who came from Kupava, they were able to produce the township. So the, the community is being ruled by the township. Okay. Yes. So the leadership is made up of the two groups. Yes. But the chief is from the Kupwame. Yes, people. Kupuava. Kupuava. Yes. Okay. Okay. And then I'd like to know, I mean, you mentioned that you people finally settled here mm -hmm. after defeating the buyer and the Ashanti. Yes. Okay. But we know that this place is known for a lot of German work. Yes. Where the, where the, where the people of Amejo were here before the Germans came or they came during the buyer time? They were here before the Germans came. Okay. The buyer were conquered long ago before the Ashanti war. Okay. So Amejope settled here before the Ashanti war came. Yes, and then the Germans came in in 1886 as missionaries from who? Mm. To start the work of God here. So in 1886, they came to explore the area to see how best they can also um, come together with the people. Mm -hmm. Then they came back in 1889. That was actually when the church started. Mm -hmm. So in 1889, that is how come in 1939, the cross was commissioned on the top of the mountain to mark their 50th year anniversary. So the people were fully settled before the Germans came in. Do you, this, this is just on the side, but do you have a name for the, peop the people that live here? For instance, if you go to the, um, the Anglo land, they call them Anglos. If you go to Ashanti region, they call them Ashantis. Yes. The people of this town, what are they called? There was the a name for them. The people of this town are part of the people of Avatimi. Okay. So we are known as Avatimi. Avatimi. And in our language, we are Kedanuma. In Sia language? In Sia, we are Kedanuma. Okay. So it is like this. Uh, we are people who speak Sia. So Kedame, mm -hmm. we are from Kedame. Mm -hmm. But in Ewe, we are Avatimeo. Okay. And we Kedame people, we speak Sia. Okay. Kedanuma speak Sia. Okay. Uh -huh. Or we can say Sidemi Se. So outside this community or this traditional area, if I see someone from my community, I can refer to the person to either 
If you are a man, I can say Kedone. If you are a woman, I can say Kedeje. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would like to. I would like us to go around the community. But before that, I know this is the highest human settlement. Yes. Right. Tell me about that. Okay. So geographers were able to measure uplands and they, they were able to tell us that we are the hum highest human settlement in Ghana. So this community, we being the highest human settlement, if it is cold, it's very cold. If mm. it is hot, it is still cold. Okay. Yes. Because so it's always cold here? Mostly cold. Mostly cold. Because geographers say the higher, higher you go, the cooler, cooler it becomes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and the people of this town, how are they like? We are loving and welcoming people. From the warlike people, we are now loving. Yes, and we are lovely and welcoming people. Okay. That's why we have been able to welcome you warmly to our community. Yes. Okay. I see that a lot. I mean, there are people always smiling and wanting to greet you. Yes. What is the main occupation of the people of this town? Well, previously it used to be farming. Mm -hmm. But this time our migration is taking place. So most people are migrating to the cities. Mm. And not everybody farms as such anymore. The previous and most uh, work that people used to do was to grow rice, brown rice. Mm. We call it am. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was what our people used to grow around this area. Mm. But for now, our community, we don't grow the almond rice again. And then more so, migration has taken all the leaves away. Oh, so is that why we see a lot of elderly people, old men and yes. old women here? Yes. And your people live very long. Is it because they exercise a lot because of the going up, yes. ascending and descending? Well, they grow up, how do I say it? They grow much older because of the weather, mm -hmm. one, and then because every day, even if you want to fetch drinking water, you have to climb. You I exercise see. every so, day. Okay. There is no flat land anywhere for you. Mm. Yes. Okay. So you see that all the time people are exercising and then their body is responding to the weather mm. all the time. And then you mentioned a moo. That's yes. brown, rice, brown rice. Which is what you usually grow here. Yes. But is that your staple food? Is that the most common food no. or food crop? Yeah. At first, brown rice used to be common, but nowadays our use no longer go brown rice. And then banana in this area used to be so much available that you can come to the community and someone can just give you banana for free. Okay. But today again, because of migration, the use are not growing banana. But we still have banana. Yeah, I see a lot around. of banana yes. around. We still have banana around. So you could see that um, some. Let me say, 10 years ago, banana was uh, what used to be a cash for banana. Yes. And then we also grow, we used to grow potatoes mm -hmm. in this community. Potatoes does very well in this community. But again, no one grows potatoes again. So for now, you would say that you don't really have something that anyone and can then, say, oh, if you come to Amejope, you can get banana very easily or you can get cassava very easily. Okay, so today when you come to Amejope, you can get banana, but not like it used to be. And then our people in the community, we used to grow yam. We celebrate a uh, yam, yam festival, festival okay. before, because we used to grow yam a lot. But today, again, we are no more growing yam as such, mm. only few grow yam. Mm. But when you come to the community, you can always get cassava, um, cocoyam, banana, plantain as well. Okay. But not so much in abundance like it used to be. So yes. so that's a brief history of the Amejope community. Yes. Um, Madam Ruby Ame has been helping us do this. We are going to take a brief tour around the community and then we continue the conversation so we get to know some of the places she's already mentioned. So, like I was telling you, this is the chief's palace where our chief resides. And currently, uh, as ch our chief has traveled out. And our community, we say the chief has gone to the village. 
which means okusi atre kofi. Uh, we are preparing to receive him back, which means he's dead, but you don't have to put this part. Oh, yes. Okay. So that means in our language we say okusi atre kofi. So very soon he will be back for burial. So we say in our community that okusi atre kofi. So currently okusi has traveled our chief. In our language we call the chief okusi. So currently the chief has traveled to the village and then he will be back very soon. Yes. So I was telling you about um, um, the people of Kupuava coming together with the people of Odopolomi to set up this community fully. And I mentioned something called Ibole. Yes, so the Ibole, the stones. This one is for Odopolomi people. Yes. This is for the Odopolomi people. And it's called Ibole. And so the, it's like a, a seat? Yes. Oh. Yes. Just like a seed, growing a seed to bring the two people together to stay in harmony. And so the Odopolomi people are responsible for customary rights performances. Okay. Assuming they want to install a chief, uh, the Odopolomi people are responsible for all those uh, rights that are being performed. And then Odopolomi people are also responsible for something we call Keseka. Keseka is just like a, a laying down a tree, a wood. They cut woods and then they lay it in some parts of the communities. That means they are preparing their community, they are putting their community in place. In other words, they say that they are guarding the community. So Dopolomi people are responsible for guarding the community. They perform customary rites like pouring libation and all of that. That is their responsibility. And in our language, we refer to them as Chahone or Kechichalia. Kechichalia means uh, the ground people. They are the mancrados of the community. Yes. And so then these stones, people sit on it? People don't sit on these stones. You can see some stones around here. There used to be a very big tree here, like this one. This is where elders sit okay. in those days. And as of today, elders sit here. Women don't sit, sit here. Yes. And women don't sit on these stones. Okay. That is culture and tradition. But there's no particular reason. It's just... Well, um, those days, people who perform cast, uh, traditional rites mostly sit here. So they say that those people, maybe for example, a woman, you are in your menses, yeah. you can't sit here. And, or else it might happen that you continue bleeding. Okay. Yes. So they ban women from oh, sitting so. where the men sit as but, well. But now it's not only elders who sit here, right? Oh, the, whether you are a boy. <laughs> Once yeah. you are a male, you, are you, a can, male, sit you can sit here. Yes. But for respect, if you are young, you don't have to be sitting here. Yes. So the second one up there, uh, is for the people who came from Kupuava. Yes, their grandfather, I told you, the person who led this Avatimi people is called Avati. Yes, so our great grandfather Avati, who led his people, this is his to show that he's able to collaborate with the people of Dupumi to form the community in peace. So this one was laid by Avati and his people. So it's the same Avati who shared the responsibility of guarding the community to his children. So these yes. stones have been here for very long time. Very, very long time. Hundred. Do you any rights on it? Yes, you can see uh, there's a stick on it. That is what is being used. And this particular stick, that is what is being used to perform rites on it. So every year they perform rites on this one and, and the other one. one as well. So who performs the rites? So this one, the people of Avati, they perform the rites for they, this they one. They elect somebody. Yes, to... they pour libation and then perform rites for it. And then uh, the people of Dupumi pour libation and perform rites for that one as well. But they all do it together at the same day. Okay. Yes, and at the same time. Yes. Alright, and this entire place from is the marketplace. Is 
is a market square. Yeah. Okay, so what kinds of things do you easily find when you come to the Amejope market? So, you can find banana. But today it is scarce, you can only see something little. <laughs> so you can find food crops. And then usually in those days, in the market, we used to have the market days on Sunday and Thursday. And people from our surrounding communities also come to sell. But today, all of that is down. So only the local market women operate the market daily. You can get fish, tomatoes, everything you need in the market. And all from the farms here? Yes. Mostly the cassava, the kukuyam, all from the farms here. But and then sometimes we, when we have seasonal crops, that's the uh, tomatoes, the pepper, and then the garden egg that they are growing now. So when it is time for harvesting, they bring it to the market and then send some to home. But then when their season is not yet, they get some from home to the market to be able to supply for the people in the community. Yes. And how about education? Yeah, well, our people, we attend school a lot. That's how can we decided not to be farmers again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. and with the exposure of the training college, we are known for education so much. We have two primary schools, kindergartens, we have a technical school, we have a JHS, and we have at least a tertiary which shows that we are ready for education and we are always available and then we always get educated. That's why we think today farming is no longer a lucrative job for us. <laughs> yes, because our people go to school a lot. Yes. So the secondary school here is Amejope Secondary It's a technical school. So Amejope Technical school. school, yes. The technical school. Now before we wrap up, before we wrap up, yes. where we move from, there's a very big tree and there are people under it. Is yes. there anything to it? Yes. That is where the elders of Dopome sit. Okay. Yes, that is where they sit, and then. Um, so there are also some of the stones here. Yes. Over there. Some of the stones are over there, and as you can see, like I told you, women don't sit on those stones as well. Okay. It is only for the Dopome people. And recently, um, when they want to have a town meeting, they sit there as well, call the community, and then they do the town meeting. Another under the tree, yes. So they used to hold the town meeting here as well, but the big tree has died off. So they have moved to that of the tree of Dopome people. So they sit there and then they do the town meeting when they call the community together for any information that they want to give to them. Yes. And then before then also, our people have a culture. Um, just like the Dipo people have, we also have a culture which we call Pusakoko. And then the Pusakoko is when we use a particular type of uh, cloth. We call it in our language Kutukutui and Bewe. So in those days, when you first have your, as a lady, when you have your first menses, your parents will buy that cloth and then expose you to the community that you are ready for marriage. Is it similar to the Krobo's Depot right? A little similar to the Krobo's Depot. But it's a puberty right? It's a puberty right. Ushering you into womanhood. That you are ready for womanhood. Someone can come and then marry you. So we do that. Um, anytime you are ready, they do it for you. But today, um, due to financial crisis, some of us grow and then we buy things and then they do it for us. So, I told you earlier that we are known as a Kedanuma. And then, um, if I know you, if I realize that you are speaking my language outside this community, I can refer to you as Kedeje. But then, before then, if you are reached puberty, but then the rites have not been performed for you, I'll call you Kedejewi. What does that mean? which means you have not been yeah, fully yes. ushered to okay. womanhood. So I'll not call you Kedeje, you are Kedejewi. So when you have been ushered into the womanhood, then I'll call you Kedeje, which means you are now a full Kedeje. Okay. Yes. So it's still being done today? Yes, it's still and, being done today. it means that every woman at some point must go through the right. Yes, you must go through the right, yes. But today, because of financial constraints, people do it during the Easter season, where everybody comes around. 
to support them do it. Yes. All right. Is there anything else you'd like us to know before we wrap up? Yes. Um, I'd like you to know that right now, Ame Jope has adopted a Tourism Day festival, which is now a festival that will be celebrating every year to be able to attract tourists into our community, sell our community. And then this Tourism Day Festival is cooperated with our culture, our history, and our food. Okay. So it is a full package that we'll be celebrating every year. During this period? During, that is, the Tourism Day is mostly celebrated in September, but we have decided to be celebrating in the first week of October. Of October, of October. Every, every year yes. in Namajove. Yes. Okay. yes. So, Tourism Day, we invite everybody every year to come and celebrate with us so we can raise funds and then develop the community. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ruby, for doing this with us. Yeah, we are welcome. grateful. Very insightful, right? We got to learn all about the people of Amejofe. We now know what their language is, we know about the people, we know about their history and everything else you need to know. And in addition, you now know there's a day for tourism here, first week in October. So you can make time, book it on your calendar and make some time to experience a major pair for yourself. Remember, we are doing this in collaboration with the Volta Regional Authority, Tourism Authority. And it's based on their campaign, visit Volta, experience Volta and share Volta. This is People and Places. I'm glad you could make time with us. My name is Wanda Amihegan. Until we see you in the next episode, take care and stay safe.